All right, moving on to the surface area of cylinders. This is a cylinder right here. We have a top, that's a circle. And we have a bottom that is a circle as well. In this particular cylinder, <clears throat> we're talking about a right cylinder, so it's standing straight up. The top circle and the bottom circle are the same, which is where we get where we get this from right here. We know that the area of one circle is pi r squared, but there are two of them, so it's two pi r squared. Which means that everything else, what we'll call the lateral surface area, it's kind of like the label of this can of soup or something. That is 2 pi r times h. Now where does that come from? Well, if you think about it, if we were to take some scissors and cut right down, maybe this, right down there, and cut the circle off the top and the bottom, we'd be left with this net. So the cylinder actually breaks up into a net that has two circles and a rectangle. That's all the purple part is, it's a rectangle. And that rectangle is h units this way, and this would be the circumference of the circle. Circumference is 2 pi r. So to find the area of a rectangle, you take length times width, which is 2 pi r times h. That's where this comes from. So that would be the lateral or the side surface area. And this component is the top and the bottom circles. Cool, so let's try a few. Some of these are going to be somewhat tricky. Number one, write your formula, 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Radius in this case is 31. Height is 54. So you type that all into your calculator and you get a really big number. This is an area, so that number is going to be squared, centimeters squared. Comes out to be 16,556.193 centimeters squared. So that'll be the surface area of this entire cylinder. Again, we're, when we think of surface area, we're thinking of how much paint it would take you to paint this entire thing. So if you were to paint this top circle, the bottom circle, and the lateral, it would be that much stuff, right? Number two. Number two is, again, very simple. 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Radius in this case is not 6, but it's 3. Be careful here. The diameter is 6, so the radius is half of that. So 2 pi r times 3 times 5. You type that all into your calculator. Uh, 2 times 9 is 18 pi plus 30 pi. So if you type in 48 pi, it's about 48 times 3. A little over 3, so we're talking about 150.796 meters squared. Okay, number 3. Number three is laying on its side, so we have to make sure that we don't make the simple mistake of putting the radius in the wrong spot. In this case, this is actually the height, and the radius would be right here. Radius in this case is five. It's half of 10, so we just plug those values in, two times pi times five squared, plus two times pi times five times nine. So again, if you wanted to simplify all that, you can, or you can go right to your calculator. Uh, this is 25 times 2 is 50 pi. Uh, 45 times 2 is 90 pi, so this should be 140 pi. And that comes out to be 439.823 square centimeters. Moving right along. So this one's a little bit more challenging. This time we're given the surface area, so let's write that formula down first. We're given the surface area, 
so that's 108, that goes right underneath SA. And we're given the height, but we don't know the radius. We don't know the radius, so that's our task. Our task is to find the radius. The height we just said was 10 centimeters, and the surface area is 108. Okay, so this is hopefully you have a pretty good grasp of your Algebra 1. Uh, if not, then that might be a little bit of a, an issue here, and I'll tell you what skill, what video to go seek out in order to solve this one. But uh, what we're looking at here is 2 times 10, that's 20 pi times r. So I've got a squared term, a linear term, and, a, and then a constant. All right, right away, that should be ringing bells that you need to know how to solve quadratic equations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a greatest common factor of these two terms right here. The GCF of those two terms is 2 pi. So when I take that out, I get r squared plus 10r. And then I'm going to divide both sides by that GCF, and that leaves me with this. Uh, 108 over 2 pi, you have to put that in, in parentheses, the denominator right there, you get seven, about 17.1887 is equal to r squared plus 10r. Again, quadratic equations, we want to get all the terms on one side, so we're going to subtract 17.1887, that leaves us with 0. And now, of course, we want to, normally our, our instinct is to factor that, but this is not factorable because it's a crazy little decimal right here. So we're not going to be able to factor it, but we do have a couple tools that we can use. We can use the quadratic formula. That'll give us an answer. Or what I like to do is utilize my technology whenever possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type this whole thing, this whole thing right here, into my graphing calculator. And instead of R's, I'm just going to use X's. So you can see right here, I've typed it into, I've gone, this is my home screen. All right, my home screen starts there. And I went to, R, I went to Y equals. And I typed in X squared. The X variable is right here plus 10x minus 17.1887. Quadratics, as you hopefully know, graph as parabolas. So if we were to graph this thing and maybe zoom out a little bit, you would see that it's a parabola. And our job is when we're trying to solve parabolas, I'm going to go back to zoom standard. Our job is to find out where the uh, y value is 0. All right, and in that case, the answer is right here. So whatever that x value is, the y value is zero. That is called a solution to this quadratic. It's also called a zero. So if we calculate, go to second trace, which is the calculate menu, we go down to zero, press enter. It's gonna ask us for our left bound. Now for left bound, we could have just pressed enter, but I wanna see, I wanna show you that there's a blinking cursor. And you need to put that somewhere to the left of your your x intercept. Yeah, your x intercept. So you press enter. Then the question is, what's the right bound? So you have to tell the calculator that you want to look in between these two arrows. So you have to go to the right somewhere and press enter. And that's going to ask you for a guess. So you just get your cursor as close as possible. All right, and that is how your graphing calculator finds the solution of a quadratic. So the answer is 1.495. So the radius is 1.495 centimeters. And that's your answer. Now, hopefully you're saying, wait a minute, aren't there two solutions? If we zoom out again, we see that the, the parabola actually touches twice, touches the x-axis twice. There's a solution here and a solution that we just found at 1.49 or so. And that's true, but 
think about what this x value would be. That would be a negative something. And in algebra class, it's totally fine to have a negative x value. But for a question like this, when we're actually trying to find a true distance, or you're trying to find the radius of this thing, that can't be a negative. There's no way. So we only use the uh, positive value that we get from our solutions. And, and it might be a good idea to go back and maybe check that into this formula to see if it works, to see if this formula actually gives you 108. It's not going to be perfect because this is not a, this is a rounded answer and this was a rounded answer. So it's not going to be perfect, but it should be pretty close. And I'll leave that uh, for you to try on your own. All right, so next up, let's make... Number five is a little bit easier. It doesn't require uh, quadratics, but uh, the surface area of a cylinder is 900. So let's write down the formula. The formula is 900. Two times pi times radius squared. Thankfully, they give us the radius here. Times two times pi times seven, and the height is missing. That's what we're trying to find. All right, so 900 is equal to 2 times pi times 49, 2 times pi times 49, plus 2 times pi times 7. Well, that's 14 pi times h. So 900 is equal to 98 pi plus 14 pi times h. What we're going to do is we're going to go 900 minus 98 pi. We're going to get that. 98 pi over here. Now the reason this is not a quadratic is because there's no squared term here. All we have is that h which is a linear term. So this is going to be 900 minus 98 pi which is about 592.124. That's equal to 14 pi times h. So now of course we want to get rid of the 14 pi and leave h on its own. So we're going to divide both sides by 14 pi. So we take 592.124 divided by 14 pi. Make sure you put this in parentheses, otherwise I think the calculator will give you a strange answer. You get 13.463 roughly, and that's in inches. So that is our height. And what I like to do is draw a picture once I get everything all set. If the radius is 7 and the height's about 13 and a half, that tells me that my cylinder is going to be, that's not a very good picture, it's going to be about as tall as it is wide because it's 14 inches wide, right, diameter is 14, and the height is about the same. So I'm looking at a cylinder that is about as wide as it is tall. So there were five examples on cylinder surface area.